Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday evening. My name is Arms Boomenlag, back for edition 20 of the Arms Boomenlag Project, the live stream podcast that you can catch on a weekly basis right here on my Facebook page. Also, we're broadcasting live on LinkedIn and on Twitter, and you can catch the re-roll on YouTube, and you can also search the Arms Boomenlag Project on Spotify. I've got a really awesome guest tonight joining us all the way from the West Coast this evening. Uh, very honored to carve into some of his family time to have him on the air. So we're going to bring him on in just a few moments. But before we get to our guests, we'll kind of chit chat about what's been going on here on the show. You might remember we had some technical problems last week, but we made it happen with a special afternoon edition of the project. We had the one and only Steve Bell on the show, former AM800 sports personality and voice of the Windsor Spitfires, talking about his time at Bell Media and what's ahead for the Windsor Spitfires. That episode is up on YouTube and Spotify. And then this Tuesday... Great guy, Jeremy Reno from Easter Seals here in Windsor, Essex, also part of the big Comic-Con push a few years back here at Caesars Windsor. He's going to geek out with us on Tuesday night. So I'm really pumped up to uh, welcome, I would say, a brother from another mother. Uh, I've known Jeremy through family and I've known Jeremy through charitable events over the last couple of years. So really excited to have him on the program. So my guest who's going to be joining us here in just a few moments. I mean, what can I say about this guy? He is a percussionist, uh, drummer for one of the most prolific Canadian rock bands in history, in my humble opinion, okay? Uh, I love the songs, Temptation, Walking Wounded, Heaven Coming Down, just to name a few. I was saying to him before we came on the air, when I used to be on 89X and we got to play his music, I used to really geek out. Um, he began drumming at 11 years old, which is incredible, and then professionally since 1990 when he joined his childhood friends, Jeff Martin and Stuart Chatwood, informing, you guessed it, the Tea Party. This guy tirelessly works for charities and organizations right across Windsor and Essex County. Popular fundraisers like the 24-hour drum marathon involved in countless events. He's a dad. He's a husband. Bottom line, he is one hell of a guy. I'm very happy to welcome the one and only Mr. Jeff Burroughs live <laughs> with us here on the stream this evening. Jeff, my man, brother, first of all, you? thank you for spending some time with me, dude. This is great. I'm getting a little 519 in my system while I'm out in the uh, 604. It's good. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome, too, because I know I was trying to line you up because, uh, you know, I was saying to Steve Bell earlier this, earlier this week, like I had like a list of, you know, people I would love to have on the show. And, uh, you know, you're up there, man. And so I'm so blessed that you made some time for me during family time. So what are you guys doing out on the West Coast? Um, my mom and her husband, Rick, have been out here for quite a while. So we we normally come out every August. I usually spend my birthdays out here. And last year was a bit of a bust, but um, because of uh, of COVID. So this year, as soon as we were able to to get there, masks on in the in the plane, we got on and and it's been wonderful. It's just a nice chill, chill time. It's, everyone's saying, enjoying your vacation. I'm like, this isn't my vacation. I get to visit my mom and Rick and my sister Shelly. So it's all, it's That's all awesome. great. That's awesome. It's always good to reconnect with fam, especially at, uh, yeah. you know, the last couple of years have been, it, it was funny. I was saying to my wife, Gary, Jeff, it's like blink and it's like all of a sudden it's going to be 2022 around the corner and what a weird time we live in. And <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I mean, obviously some big news just before we started the show and Jeff and I were texting earlier this, I guess this afternoon for me, but earlier this morning for him on the West Coast. Um, bring this up here in just a minute. This was on the uh, Tea Party's uh, website and just basically a statement talking about their upcoming tour that they had plans. Uh, after two years of planning, delays and replanning, the Saints and Sinners tour has yet again been met with immovable pandemic related roadblocks and regional restrictions, making it impossible to keep our dates for this November. And as a result, we are canceling the tour with no plans to reschedule. Please hit up your place of purchase for refunds, restrictions. You know, it talks about the four bands, all the support that you guys have received. Uh, and they're hoping whatever comes in the next couple of days, months in store, they face it together so they can come out the other side of this thing, still talking to each other and ready to fill the venues right across Canada with music again. So, dude, like, uh, man, Jeff, what do I say to that, man? It's like, I know how bad uh, you were to get back on the road, dude. Yeah, it's this was the third reschedule. So, or not reschedule, the second reschedule. But um, it's it's frustrating. It's frustrating for everyone. Um, 
it just comes down to so many different variables, variables, not only between cities within each province, but between province and province. So you can't blame it on one single thing. It's a multiple amount of things. And I'm just seeing more and more of these happening with, you know, some of our American friends and in, in bands and, and of course, a lot of Canadian bands. The one-offs are nice right now that everyone's at, at least able to get to, you know, out in the festival land, but um, we're just, we're not set up for any of those. And now further to that, if any of the festivals that you were scheduled to be on, so, so band B, if they were scheduled to be on festivals this summer and it got canceled, well, that's next summer's schedule. So we're kind of, we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place trying to reschedule. So they just had to, you know, cancel it and have everyone try to fend for themselves for now. Like I can, I, I, I just, I know you, right? So I know how much mm. it means for you to be in a live venue and you want to do it safely and you want to do it responsibly and you want people to be in attendance and you want to bring back that vibe. And it's like, yeah, you know, I had, um, and I know, you know, Chrissy Cochran, I've had Chrissy Cochran mm. on the show about a couple of weeks ago. And she said, I genuinely miss the interaction. It's one thing to do something in front of a camera like this, but mm. when you're in alive in front of people, like there's nothing like it. It's true. And I applaud everyone from, you know, YQG all around the world who have been able to, you know, do that little pivot and, and do the live things via online and virtual and so on. But it just gets, it's, there's so much planning that has to go into those and beyond, you know, just rolling into town with a bus and a semi and, and so on. It, you need a lot of sponsorships in order. So you become not only the buyer of the show or the promoter of the show, but you're the performer of the show and you're also soliciting sponsors. And it, uh, it's, it's, it's understandable that the amount of frustration out there for everyone. So do you see a light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, or is that like a moot point at this point in terms of, you know, maybe 2022 summertime? Hopefully yeah. I mean, willing. if I had the answers, I would give them I'm, like anyone would, I think, uh, it's it's one of those situations where it's still wait and see. It's 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 kind of uh, to, to paraphrase uh, my stepfather. It's a it's a invisible war, and wars last more than a year, and it's a fact. You know, it's it's. I don't want to get into pandemic this and you know sure. left yep. versus right or anything. It's yep. just we're in a situation, and it is not going to remedy itself. That's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been in, I'm assuming you've been in contact with the other guys in the band and, and the other mm. bands that are on tour about this. And I mean, they're, they've got to be just as disappointed, right? Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's bummed. Everyone's trying to remain optimistic. Um, many of us have new music, which we were <clears throat> first going to coincide with the first announcement of this tour last summer. And then we postponed certain releases to coincide with the second or the, the first reschedule that got moved. And then, Subsequently, we released a song called Summertime this summer to coordinate with second release that's going to come out with the tour. So uh, at least we have new music and we have new things coming up um, that we can talk about, if you like, that is yeah. interesting to at least the people who enjoy our music. So it's good. Yeah, stuff. let's get it. I mean, l let's get into that a little bit, too. And, and you know, talk about some of that, 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 that new sort of uh, the music that you have and, and the, the collaboration that you've put behind it and get things going too, because you, just because we're in the pandemic, right, Jeff, you haven't stopped being creative, right? You haven't really yeah. stopped that whole process. Yeah. There's a lot of bands writing the blues lately though. I don't, I don't get <laughs> <laughs> The genre is taking off all over. Again. It's huge, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've, we've got, um, we've got an EP it's in the can, uh, which included, summertime which is released uh, we've got a second single ready to be released and there's a, a bit of a collab on that that i can't talk about but everyone knows the person and he's absolutely amazing um we've got announcements about our 30th anniversary of the indie release that we did that eventually got us our record deal and so on and so forth done right upstairs from the uh old coach and horses which was actually um the loop and we used to talk to the Primo brothers all the time about turning the bar or that whole space into a bar. And once we had finally moved out, they, they turned it into the loop. And that's exactly kind of where that album came from. So there's all of these types of things. Um, we just got a new deal in Europe, which is great. Uh, that takes us uh, across Europe and Russia. So there's some exciting things, but 
we don't want to put the cart ahead of the horse, you know? Sure. And, and you, you miss the camaraderie with these guys, right? I mean, look at this footage I've, well, I've got. I mean, it's yeah. you know how happy you are on stage, man. <laughs> yeah, that that I believe is uh, the Australian. Uh, once we got back together, we we didn't know we were going to do a concert film until two days before, which was probably better for our nerves. Um, but that was that was great. That's a place called the Horden Pavilion in Sydney, and it's it holds about eight thousand. And it was just so much fun and i haven't even watched this this is great i <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to find something like I, I was trying to i always like to put some video when i have the video i mean we podcast this too right so i mean hopefully yeah. folks watch the live stream too but i always try to find something and i i was trying to find you know you guys doing your thing and just getting in the moment and i found this and i'm like i mean i would have killed to be a part of this i mean you guys are just in the element and look at you you're just uh, just vibing yeah. off the crowd man yeah the, i mean our crowds we've been really blessed. I mean, early, in our early days we did, and we still do um, a bit of acoustic uh, bits and so on throughout the show. But back in the day, it was probably 20, 30% of the show and people would literally sit down in the concert venue, like on their hands or sorry, uh, you know, crisscross leg and, and, you know, just five and out and we'd be playing either the bongos or the, you know, the tablas and sitars and stuff. It was crazy. That's awesome. But uh, that kind of reminds me of that, that one there. I love it. So you got lots of stuff on the horizon. It's just whether or not you're getting in front of people, getting it happen, and you're doing it in the virtual sense too. Um, and then keeping busy here in Windsor Essex too. I mean, you had some really cool pivots through the pandemic too. I know you did some huge legwork to get the drum marathon off the ground and in a yeah. virtual format this year. That was pretty exciting to see. Yeah, so last year um, we were bummed because we didn't think we could do it and I had to blow it out and I felt horrible telling the charities and then I thought, you know what, um, if there's a way or ways and means we can do it, we'll do it. Uh, and so we did a bit of a half marathon last year and it worked out well. And um, this year it worked out even better. But again, it's going back to its it's the amount of effort that has to get put into the organizing of that and the amount of sponsorships. It's, it's a really a lot easier. And I'm always so appreciative of, of the Windsor and Essex County community because people show up within the normal show anytime during the 24 hours. And so you pay your admittance and normally they'll pick up a raffle ticket for this or, you know, this for that. And, and, you know, we'd have this, wonderful opportunity and wonderful time whereas all of that is sort of lost when you do the virtual events so i rely heavily on you know our <laughs> and it's unfortunate on our local merchants and our local stores who have also been affected by it so it's just a vicious circle you're you're trying to help but you can't help too much because you don't want to take away from the the mouths that feed their children it's just it's a god show <laughs> but it worked out really good. It, so. it, it worked out good. I, I actually, well, a, a mutual friend of ours, right? Uh, you know, Paul and Rondo, they were saying about yeah. how cool it was to, you know, get to know you through, you know, different events and then get to see different things, you know, that happen behind the scenes. Cause it's not just, I mean, it's a lot of the filming it and putting it on and then, you know, having it pre-recorded, but it's the behind the scenes stuff that the people don't see and the coordination between everybody happening. It's a lot of work. Yeah. And you know, I love doing what we get to do, but, I miss Gary Demons who coordinates everything for the live show and I don't want to bother him when I'm a salesman and I'm, I'm looking for people to, to help us out and, and to give them advertisements and, and so on. So my job has just gotten a lot harder. Um, normally I just show up and I get to play for 24 hours, which is a little bit hard, but it doesn't, it's not as mentally taxing and it's not, you know, as, as rough as it's been, but we've worked it and I hope we don't have to do it again like that. <laughs> well, I, think I need my Gary back. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? You, you need your dudes. You need, yeah. you need the guys yeah. that do the, the, the stuff, Everybody, right? So you can concentrate yes. on your stuff. Yeah. Um, the charities in, in Windsor Essex, I think are blessed to have somebody uh, as community minded as you um, sort of leading the charge here. Now, yeah. I, I go back to the days when you were on Blackburn Radio too, and I remember you used to do Jeff in the Box and, and those different mm -hmm. things. And d did you always feel that you wanted to give back and start to root a little bit more in the Windsor Essex area? Like, how did that start? Um, you can go. I mean, I can go back as far as my parents and and you know the volunteer time that they would put in, whether it was for sports or this or that, and and that came from such a great place. 
And I have uh, my grandmother on the borough side of the family, my Nana, um, she used to raise funds for what was called the Sunshine Bus, which took um, elderly patients from the hospital out onto day trips. And in order to keep the bus going and, and up kept and so on and so forth, uh, she would raise these funds all the time. And she was a volunteer at the hospital and so on. And that really kind of helped me. I'd, I'd go along sometimes with her in South Windsor and um, solicit donations and so on. And, you know, once the band started, um, we had a manager who really um, inspired us as a band and myself, especially to to start giving back because we were fortunate. I mean, there's there's one in a million chance that you can really get to be what, what I've gotten to um, see and experience and I'm so grateful and I'm humbled by everything. Uh, so if, if I can use that sort of uh, platform to give back, why, why wouldn't you, right? And and that's just kind of been the mantra since then. And I, and I should go back to our, our manager who inspired the band. He passed away at the age of 38. So we were 33 and he died of lung cancer. And that's what really, really got me going because he's the one who was pushing us so hard and really got us to that next level. And then he passed away at such a young age from lung cancer and never being a smoker and a, you know, a guy in great shape. So that, that was a bit of the uh, initial stages of, of what has become this, which is really um, getting to do things that I love to do with, with like-minded friends like yourself and Paul and Rhonda and, and this whole community, everyone just seems to gather around. It doesn't take too, too much from any one particular person, just a little bit from everyone. And it makes a difference much like John Fairley's face to face, you know, 10 For people, sure. 10 bucks, you know? Yeah. And, and it's, it's really about making those lasting relationships. Right. And you get to it really is be aware of people down the road and then you get to work with them. Like, like I, you know, shameless plug here, like, you know, some of the work that you guys are doing with Layuna and, and mm -hmm. the humane society. I mean, we are so grateful for that as well. Uh, you yeah. know, team up with you guys too. I think it's just a great partnership. And, you know, I think that that speaks to the effect that you have had on people. Like we've got comments coming in from LinkedIn this evening. This mm -hmm. one's from Josie saying, uh, you know, my husband's a music teacher who runs a music program at the elementary school he teaches at, and he spearheaded the Bongo Buddies program that has impacted mm -hmm. children at the school who would not usually have had the opportunity to play music. Jeff, you've been quite the motivation and inspiration to him as a drummer. That's amazing. So you, I, I've, that, I've never heard of Bongo Buddies. I want to check that out. <laughs> So Josie, maybe if you're if you're still watching on LinkedIn, just let us know what school that is, and I'll get that information over to Jeff so he can you know maybe check that out too. But that's cool kind of neat, that? right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, being in the Windsor area, Jeff, you must get that uh, you know quite often from folks saying you know you've inspired my children to do this, you inspired my husband to do this. You know, you get those connections, right? Yeah, and it's mutual. I mean, every day you get inspired by a video of a of a little girl playing drums, or you know a little girl out doing charity. I mean, what, what warms anyone's heart more than two little ones out, out front selling lemonade for, you know, uh, cancer, children's cancer or, or raising funds for this hospital. Or I, you know, that's parenting done really, really well. And I love seeing that. So um, yeah, it's mutual. <laughs> Got a lot of comments coming in. People saying, "Hey, we gotta, we gotta bring this up." A happy birthday to you from Judy, Jeff. Uh, Thank you. Todd yeah. also saying happy birthday. So, how do you feel? You celebrating up on the west coast, right? Yeah, that was that was last night. A little a little rough today. Not looking <laughs> uh, my best. I gotta say, <laughs> I, I blame uh, I blame my awesome family. We had a great great dinner and great company, and you know, I I've really gotten. Um, used to having my birthdays on the West Coast, which is nice because it adds another three hours to my existence <laughs> every time I come here. <laughs> I like that. You just, just go to a different time zone and then yeah, you add just, a little bit more to it, right? You never you never age. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had a birthday in three time zones once when we were flying from Australia, landed in New Zealand, landed in Canada, and it was really funny. So anyway. <laughs> just going through the different time zones. Like, oh yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> So, I mean, let's talk about, you know, more charity and, and the different things that you do in the Windsor-Essex area in terms of connecting with folks when you're not rocking, man. Um, there's so much to talk about and so many organizations that you've touched. And 
I wanted to bring some of these photos up mm. here too. I mean, I know you were heavily involved with the Unemployed Help Center and and helping them out and then CMHA and, yeah. and those connections that grew what orga organically with you as well? Yeah, um, I think the uh, the food bank with the Saints um, food banks, because we, we help both um, uh, June over at the uh, Help Center and we help uh, our friends in Chatham as well, uh, Outreach for Hunger. And that came about, um, I mean, I, I probably saw you uh, on the news talking about the shortages in the food banks. And that was probably five, six years ago where we really decided let's, let's make that attachment. So we, we do as much as we can in and around the community, but a Christmas show should really about be about feeding the hungry and, and those, those food banks generally run short in and around that time. And it, I figured once I saw the June 26 miracle happening, which I have nothing to do with, I'm grateful to, to, to make a donation and, and spread the news. They do such a great job and it's in the end of June. And then if other people are giving year round and then if the Christmas show um, works out perfectly so far as timing, uh, let's, let's just keep doing that. So the St. Clair College, uh, Caesars Windsor and Lyuna most recently, have all been a huge part of that. There really would not be, it's, it's, it's really a St. Clair College initiative. That's why we're called the Saints, but with an apostrophe. Um, they decided to put Jody and I together and we created a band of our best friends and we just have fun and get to raise money. So that's, that's not even a volunteering, that's just fun, you know, it's incredible. I was going to say too, I mean, you've got some huge talent on the Saints too. I mean, oh. you go through the list of like talented local musicians and, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Liz is, you know, helping out with you guys every once in a while too. And she's fantastic, but that's oh, yeah. fun, right? That's fun for you guys. There, you know, how, how blessed am I? I get, I've, I've got a great band and then I've got a great band that we get to do Christmas stuff with and we bring in people and people record we get choirs i have my music teacher from high school jim chichira jim is amazing and we've stayed connected since high school and he puts together a horn section every year and he'll be in studio so we're nearing the end of august my drums and percussion are already done for the next record so Kelly, uh, Kelly Howell and Jody and, and Mr. Chill and everybody and Liz and Steph, everybody's going into the studio in about a week or two. And then the horn section's coming in, which is my high school teacher. So it, it's just That's amazing awesome. the way things go full circle. And, you know, always keep those wonderful people close to you. Your circle should be small and make sure they're the good ones, you know. And I think that that speaks volumes to, I, I love how you say that. I, I mean, you can know a lot of people, um, but when you have those people that you can count on come hell or high water, right? It's That's so yeah. crucial. You're, they're, they're your sisters and brothers from another mother's. Like. <laughs> I testify, brother. I, yeah. 100%. <laughs> well, you I, know, I, it's... I, I, it's I, I said to somebody, I was a couple of guests back, I was I think it was Adriano Chodley from Windsor Eats. I don't know you, Adriano... Mm. Um, I was saying to him, because him and I have known each other for like years, right? And it's like, it's not about who wants to ride with you in the limo. It's about who's going to help you when you're going to ride the bus. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and we've all, and we've all needed, it, oh, we've all sure. needed those people, right? I, it's, everyone has their ups and downs. It's, it's not all, you know, peanut butter cups and roses on the side of the fence. It's, it's, it's a struggle for everybody. It, it really is. And in times like this, you really, really, find out or figure out who who your friends are and, and who you can count on and they know that they can count on you i know that i am there for the people i really need to be there for and and they know that and and you just keep chugging along and you try to be as positive as you can even when you're hit with crummy news and you have to think outside the box once again so yeah it's uh it's, it's always just to get that perspective right and to know it's like you have like those people in your inner circle, right? And then it's almost like if you have those people who vouch for somebody else that you may know of, and then you're like, okay, well, yeah. like, I know of them. And then it's like, if they're yeah. vouching for them, then I, you know, maybe I can open up that circle a little bit more, right? It's six degrees, six degrees are always a good thing. You know, you need to yes, keep sir. it, keep it nice and, and tight, but yeah, we're, we're blessed. And I'm, and I'm always grateful to, to be able to do things such as the saints show and stuff. It's amazing. 
Some more comments rolling in here, Jeff. For you. A lot of people saying happy birthday to you. Um, we've got one coming in here from Debbie who says, happy birthday, Jeff. I'm drinking tea and thinking back to Strawberry Fest in the days oh, of man. L.A. So yeah. there you go. That was fun. Uh, jo <laughs> Josie says, uh, Jeff, your acts of charity, talent, and community connection left an impact on so many. I truly feel blessed that I got to know you and hang out with you over a decade ago. <laughs> That's cool. Man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um. When you look back at like your career um, and, and, and touring and getting out there and, and being in the music business, how has the music business changed from when the Tea Party first started in the 1990s in terms of like the business aspect and maybe the connection with the fans to what music is now in the world of TikTok and, uh, yeah. you know, YouTube? Yeah, well, so I, I don't ever want to come across as a jaded old guy who, you know, had <laughs> success in the nineties. Cause I'm not, I, I, I love what is happening now. I, I love the bands that the young bands, the young solo artists who can embrace it and make something of it. Um, it was just so different when we were younger and that's, and that's it. And, and a band who started 30 years before my band started was very different then. If you compare 1960 to 1990, right. Um, and if you compare 1990 to 2020, boom again. So, uh, we didn't have internet until I think we registered the teaparty.com in 96. Um, and it, for us, it was the moment we found a modicum amount of success uh, playing in Windsor, playing. Um, and it was word of mouth, obviously, back then, because you don't have radio play or anything at that age. And sure. we would start doing, you know, a Thursday night in Windsor at the coach and then call the office in Toronto or in London and then up to say what or Sneaky D's or Lee's Palace in Toronto and then come back and do a Sunday matinee at the coach again, you know, and that's, that was our routine. And then it just, that groundswell gets created and then fingers crossed, you get a publishing deal, a record deal and things go a little easier at that point, but you work harder, but you don't have to, book your own shows, manage your own tours, find the money for the gas that same day <laughs> to get to the next city. Um, but now a days uh, you can literally do it all from your own home, which is incredible. And to further that, the, the ones who have been very resilient um, during the pandemic have developed careers far beyond what they probably would have been able to do if there was no pandemic. So you have to find opportunity in every nook and cranny within a within um, you know your desired career because someone else is going to take it and I, I I don't mind at all what's what's happening now. Some of it's a little strange for me because it's not say my favorite genre or it's it it sure. seems a little bit too forward so far as you know your TikTok stuff and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. But that's that's a different animal. That's something. So you have a music career. Now you're in charge of filming yourself and you're also in charge of your public message and so on and so forth. Whereas um, when we were starting, you didn't have to worry about what you said. Mind you, we always worried about what we said and how we presented ourselves on stage For and sure. so on. But sure. any any anything that you can do wrong, you can do wrong online. And then you, you just have to be careful about how you present yourself and how you do things. And some people have taken great advantage of it and have done wonderful things with it. So, yeah, I mean, no more videos. No more, it's just things have just changed. I don't know. Sure. So it's like, <laughs> it, it's kind of like I, I'd imagine too, it's, you know, nowadays it's funny. It's because you can put something on YouTube and get like hopefully quite a bit of views and, you know, hopefully you become your own marketer in that sense, right? Where yeah. I think back in the day, you'd be sending your tapes to the radio station and hopefully they yeah. spin it, you know? CJAM and, and all the university stations, we would get our, our fresh CDs and our fresh cassette tapes to all the Sam the Record bands and, you know, all of those. And we would do our own little contracts up with them. And and then you look at a oh, young lady, I forgot I was wearing Flower Face t-shirt today, um, from Windsor, who just celebrated 10 million streams on YouTube. Uh, That's crazy. That is a young artist from YQG that is blowing up everywhere. I listen to her every night before I go to sleep. It's probably between her, Chrissy Cochran and Chrissy Palace. I, I seem to have a, a girl voice thing when I'm going to sleep, it just lulls me right down and chills <laughs> out. Um, but 
there are many ways uh, to create something positive and to create change and to create a wonderful career for yourself. So people like um, like uh, Flower Face and, and Chrissy and Christy and the Soul City Music Co-op, they're doing it right. And they're doing it on their own, on their own terms. And it, it very much harkens exactly back to the way we did it, only in a much timelier manner with, with the internet and YouTube and so on and so forth. And good for them. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, Mike and Christy, um, Christy, I should say, um, have some pretty cool stuff. I know when I, I, I worked with Mike for some time at the CBC when I was there, mm -hmm. and uh, the guy was just super dedicated and such a talented guy too. I mean, to see him perform live, uh, yeah. it was pretty incredible to see. And I think Windsor it is that sort of hub, right? I mean, there's so much good talent that is just here, just on the cusp. Yeah, exactly. And all genres. So sadly, I don't know all of the, these, the, the genres and, you know, from R and B to hip hop to country and so on and so forth. But there are artists in our community that they're all over the place. I mean, look at the Rafool brothers, both Peter and Billy coming from dad. Um, it, the the gosh well, i'm not prepared i'm sorry there's country <laughs> artists okay. there's everyone <laughs> everyone is doing so well and there's ways to do it it's just unfortunately a lot of the performance artists uh really are, are missing missing out on the live stuff but there's a way to do it you can do it does the music gene run in the uh, family jeff Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all, yeah. all of my boys love music. My my oldest son is in New York. He's in a band called Tempt, and they just released their first single. Uh, awesome. I think it was just last week, or yeah, last Friday. And it's a part of a soundtrack for a movie that's coming out called Retaliators. Um, so they're doing very well. Uh, again, they're a band who has all of these scheduled uh, festivals playing with Metallica and Judas Priest and all these heavy rock bands. And now it's, you know, on the fence because no one is sure what's going to happen. And, sure. you know, it, it's a, that part's a bummer. And it's been, it's been hard on him. Like he's living in New York city. You can't do what you were doing two years ago in New York city at this moment because it's crazy. And he, you can't get back home because you're waiting on a visa in order to get back into the country. So there's a whole bunch of, everyone is affected so differently and and i feel bad for him in that sense but all of my boys not only does he play drums and and so on but uh he produces and he writes and you know and and all of my boys are very similar to that um, they have different career paths but they still do that on the side for fun awesome mm. so rewind the clock for me here a bit jeff and go back to march of 2020 when all this was going down and the world i i, I tell people the world was shutting down um I mean, what was going through your, what were you working on? What was going through your head when this was all coming out? Yeah, last March, I, I wasn't in a good place, but many of us weren't. Um, it, it was strange because that was right about the time that I think I was canceling the, the, the marathon for the first time. And then I thought we have to do something. Um, so we did the half marathon and we worked, we hooked up. So Lyuna helped me obviously with the sponsorship because you can't, pay for filming and you can't pay for editing and you can't pay for post-production and mixing and mastering and so on. So um, we did that with Media Street and uh, they were fantastic. And we've used them uh, again for the marathon and we used them for our uh, Christmas concert last year that we had to do virtually. So March was, uh, that was tough, a tough few months. March, April, May, I think were very tough on, on a lot of us. And there's, there was just so many questions that needed answers and no one had any. And it's, it's, we're kind of finding ourselves at the premise of that again. And it, everyone's looking for answers. You know, why is the tour canceled? I, I don't know. There's so many different answers that can be thrown your way yeah. between different cities, different promoters, different venues, different provinces. It just, it will not connect properly. And we don't want to put anyone in harm's way. And that's kind of where we were at in March, you know, it's, uh, it, it's those types of things. So our commitment at Layuna, at least to be um, very present in the mental health community with both the CMHA and Maryvale, uh, which is a teen mental health center. Um, our friends at Harmony in Action, who uh, 
hardly get the grants they deserve for their adults with mental disabilities. We work um, very closely with them. We have something very big coming up actually um, that I'll, everyone, if, if, if you follow me on any of the socials, you'll see for sure. Cause I'm horrible. I, I spit everything out on social. So people just probably, <laughs> there's, I got so many friends. I bet two see my thing because they've all muted me by now. But, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I we see have the stuff from stuff. Harmony too. And I wanted to talk to you about that because I think that's yeah. pretty awesome that you're, you're involved with Harmony in action. And I know um, my brother uh, is, is uh, autistic. And I know mm-hmm. in the late 80s, early 90s, we oh. were doing some stuff with Harmony in action, my family mm-hmm. and I. So I know the the ins and outs of the organization and, and you're totally right it's an organization that doesn't necessarily get the support it, it can get and should get yeah. uh yeah. for what they're doing for folks here locally yeah it's um it's an interesting so so a little bit of background if anyone wants to know it's, it's adults with mental and or physical uh disabilities and the one thing I've at least noticed, and so the facility is amazing, and you know the the Toldo family has has donated and and made some different rooms and and activities during the day. So what they do is they provide activities and learning centers and so on and day camps for adults with mental disabilities, um, and that becomes a community, and they're very tight knit. And what we're finding, and even speaking to my sister, uh, a West is they're finding that uh, many of the adults are, they're getting older and their moms and dads are passing away. And the only option at the moment is long-term care facilities. So if you're 50 years old and now you're parentless and you have challenges, you're gonna end up in a long-term care facility. And it just doesn't seem right because now you don't have that little village you get to go to every day and see your friends and see the lady who, preps the lunches and and see your instructors and it's 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 very sad to me um you know because they're they're just angels they're they're human beings with with so much special in them and and people you know they i don't think anyone does anything on purpose but they're they're just one of the forgotten groups you know and uh, i think we can do a lot to help yeah and that's a that's honestly a real fear for families um and mm-hmm. that's, I mean, we've had those conversations <clears throat> at, at my family table for my brother too. Um, between yeah. There's myself, my younger brother, Adam, who's autistic, and then my sister, Marissa and Vanessa, and they're in their early 20s. And we've had those conversations that, you know, when the time comes, somebody yeah. needs to make sure that he's, because right now he's working with the folks over at Community Living, uh, Essex yep. County, right? So he's in a yeah. group home. And that's a, like, honestly, and I, and I know that fear. I've talked to many families over the years too, Jeff, that have said, you know, single moms who have kids that are uh, developmentally disabled and yeah. they say, you know, if something happens to me. I don't really have family here. I worry about what's going to happen to my, my son. And that's, I mean, it takes a real special parent to parent somebody who, who needs the extra love and care, Yeah. but to have that weighing over your head too. I mean, God bless you guys yeah. Harmony in action to address that. That's what I'm trying to say, you know, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things and you know, it, it's an organization that are <clears throat> trying to, to present themselves more within the public so that people can understand. And everyone, like rest assured, everyone realizes that many charities have their hands out and you can only do what you can do. So don't sure. worry if, if you choose one thing, just do it well and so on and so forth. And that is an organization that I think is small and is underfunded and could use a little bit of, of at least help or knowledge that I have or community reach that I have. And I bring in like-minded friends like Paul uh, Slavic and, and he's helping now as well on the executive board. It's, it's, it's great. And, you know, everyone is friends and, and everyone has one goal. And then, and the goal is to, you know, make it, make the life uh, at least livable and palatable for anyone, no matter, um, you know, who you are. That's, that's essentially it. And, and I love the fact that you're able to incorporate some of your circle into those projects that you're so passionate about too, because like from a community lens, Jeff, you're so well known, you, you have such a big heart and you're so talented. And then you have somebody like Paul, who's got a, such a good business lens, right? And, yeah. and sort of a, a, a way of looking at things through his, his businesses that he's had over the years too. So it, it kind of, when yeah. you have that trust factor already, I think that's a, that's a recipe for success. 
Absolutely. He's he's the reasonable, pragmatic businessman who knows the ins and outs of a business. And even though I mind you, it's a business, it, it lends itself so much to, you know, being able to make sure this is done this way and having a lawyer friend on the executive as well, being able to look at things that way. It's, it's a wonderful experience. So um, God bless those guys. And, and um, yeah, we'll just keep coming up. So there is an idea and that has come to fruition, which uh, we'll talk about this. I think it's September. It's been a long time coming. It's a lot of ins and outs awesome. legally. So, but we're very excited uh, at the Harmony. Well, I'll have to keep an eye on the socials for that too. I always like to see what's happening and what you guys are cooking up over there. And uh, yeah. I think they're 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 lucky to have somebody like you, you know, help out with some some of oh, that work you. that needs to be done. So yeah. Um, and then and then you've got the fantastic relationship with with Rob and, and the team at Layuna too. I mean, talk about mm -hmm. that because that's um, that's an organization, that's a group that's really been getting out there for the last couple of years and really yeah. I guess cementing themselves in the community. Yeah, I mean, here you are. A, a laborers union, so it's the Laborers International Union of North America, that's where Lyuna comes from, it's not just made up, um, and we're the local 65, and uh, Rob Petroni and his incredible team, um, it, I'm learning a lot from him too, because what, what Rob does as a leader, a community leader, is he, he keeps that circle small, but he has a placement for everyone, and he knows that I love to do things in and around town and that if I can help his organization um, sponsor or get involved with whatever organization, you have to remember this is the members money that goes into one particular pot, the charitable arm called Champions for Change. So we have to be very diligent as to where funds get to go and, and who we help and so on and so forth because you know, we're, we're out representing 3000 members and it's one of those organizations that are growing by leaps and bounds and um, extending arms with uh, the, the females in our community who are not, you know, generally considered laborers and it's amazing. So we've developed a relationship literally that went f locally with, um, uh, we build, you know what I'm talking about? Mm, yes. just oh, the, um, the um oh yeah me too <laughs> it's 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 newer we're gonna have to cut the tape <laughs> yeah good. no cut it we're good no the um they just posted it today feel the power i saw it on twitter um yeah yeah tip of my tongue it's, over here the gordy we, yeah it's gordy the gordy howe bridge right? yeah, yeah. But, yes yes yeah yeah anyway but we built yeah. and it's it's it, it's gone national now so we're we're very very excited and that's uh, introducing young young women to um, a career in, in those trades. And the thing is, um, there's there's lots of opportunity with lots of careers, but it's been pounded into our head for decades sure. that university degree is the way to go and so on. And, and I'm proof that that doesn't have to happen, but I'm lucky. Um, whereas if, if, you know, if, if you want a career where you're working with your hands and you want amazing benefits, and I mean amazing benefits, and a kick-ass pension, which is available nowhere anymore, and opportunity to upgrade your talents and your skills whenever you want and get paid for it, what's not to like? So I, my youngest son, who went through college to become a firefighter, um, is now working in the field, learning anything and everything about housing foundations, commercial foundations, so on and so forth. And then he's going in to get his red seal and he's going to have all of this and then he can either stay or he can become a firefighter with all of this knowledge about housing structures, um, industrial structures and so on and so forth. So it's, it's, it's incredible the way it can just spread out to, you know, we build a dream. There it is. We build a dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, build a dream, and um, you know, and the likes of the CMHA, who we've we've made a a deal with for three years, that we are there for them, and I know that will get get extended. So it, it's these types of partnerships that it not only is a good um, investment for us into our community, into those charities, but it it helps.
it helps them and it raises awareness for, for them and so on. And it raises awareness for the organization, which to me is, it's, it's an almost a no brainer. I mean, you can walk in and you can get a job and you can upgrade as you're working, raise a family with benefits. And <laughs> it's, I don't, I don't understand. It's not a, it's an easy sell. So it was, it's been a, a pleasure working with, with Rob and, and his team because you know, the things that they're able to do and the things they pull off is, is just incredible. And, um, yeah, I see it grow, but you know, grow and grow and grow by leaps and bounds. And it's pretty cool to see that Gordy Howe bridge though. Right. Oh, the, uh, Layuna account tweeted it out today because I, I was tagging them on our announcement with the humane society with you guys. And, uh, I, I was, you know, tagging them, checking out their Twitter. And then I saw it and I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I go back to say 19, 90, 90, 1995, I'm at Holy Names High School here in Windsor, right? And mm-hmm. I go into the guidance counselor's office and I say, Jeff, okay, I want to do something. I don't know. Okay, well, go to university. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the university. Listen, no, it's, 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 there no, isn't. It's, it's, there is not. My, my sisters are in university. One graduated, mm-hmm. she's a teacher, and the other one's in criminology. I never went. I went to vocational school. Mm-hmm. I went to broadcast school. But, uh, you know, I look back at that and it's like, you know, the skilled trades, trades had at some point like a, a bit of a stigma behind it. And I think now yeah. in 2021, I mean, some of these guys, I mean, you look at all the construction that's hopping around here in town, Jeff. I mean, my God, it's yeah. it's a boom. What Windsor's finally booming. It's you know? booming and it's busy. And even in America, the the new uh, Secretary of Labor is a Lyuna member. It's crazy. So they're working on their big infrastructure deal worth a trillion and a half. And we're there right behind them. And, and you know, here here they are. Anytime you see the highway getting fixed or widened or, you know, <laughs> you might not like that so much, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it's being done right. And, you know, That's it's, right. it's, it's the money is local and it's staying local and we're, you know, building the middle class. And it's, it's strange to be a part of something so big because I'm, I'm a bit of micro, bit of a micromanager when it comes to things that I get to do things of, of, from my heart. But this sure. is so big, and to be, you know, a, a small little bit of the the machine that is that is helping so much, it's it, it's proud. I, I love it. It's it's a very cool feeling, and it's so much bigger than all of us, you know. I, I get the mic. I get the micromanaging thing. It's like you know, it's. I think it's the creative aspect in you, right? It's like you can you can kind of have that quality control. What's coming in and coming <laughs> out, right? And yeah. you want to make sure if you're like associated with something, it's like. It's up on the up and up and you can say, yeah, this is something that I would do. So, Oh yeah. You have to, yeah, there's, there's no if, ands or buts. There's nothing gray. It's black or it's white and that's it. So love it. Well, I, I, I just, you know, I'm, yeah, it's, it's been an, a real pleasure to get to know you on a personal level over the last little bit. And then even to work with you and Rob on, you know, what we've got cooking at the humane society too. I mm-hmm. think it's, uh, it's going to be a really exciting time. So we're very blessed again to have both you guys in the community kind of advocating for things that are local and building, you know, the folks yeah. that really build things here locally. So uh, yeah. kudos to you guys, man. Yeah. It's, it's a pleasure all the time. Can't beat it. <laughs> so outside of the Lyuna stuff, uh, stuff with the tea party, uh, charities here in Windsor, Essex, mm-hmm. you know, helping out folks behind the scenes, trying to get their, get them out like harmony in action. What else does Jeff like to do? Like, what do you, what do you do outside of all those different things? And then being a husband and a dad too. Yeah. Um, well, I love dinners out. <laughs> Hashtag Erie street. Got to give uh, the kudos <laughs> to our friends there. Um, I love, I'm trying uh, to get into really good shape again. Cause I, I really pride myself um, a, a back a couple of years. I went through a funk, the COVID funk. And so I love doing that, uh, riding my motorcycle, you know, those types of things, just everyday kind of things, uh, swimming, hanging out with my kids, travel once we can travel again. But um, it's nice because the that first beginning of my year and the music career was all encompassing. And it was all it was, it was like, you're either writing, recording, or touring, writing, recording, touring, and it, and it's cyclical. And now it's, it's slowed down and I'm sort of enjoying the semi retirement from, I don't want to say from the band, cause we still do what we want to do when we want to do it, but it's, it's not so hard pressed and it's not so go, go, go. And, um, I love that. So it, it opens up the doors for, you know, 
my wife and I to travel and to come and visit and see our son in, in New York or travel where he's doing other shows and um, pretty blessed that way. And, and a great bunch of friends that I never really even had time for in the band. You know, when, when you were touring, I would come home and I would just shut everything off. We, I'd, I'd have nowhere to go. I'd be with our babies because they were babies at that time. And, um, you know, didn't really know much about downtown Windsor anymore or LaSalle or anything. And this is kind of like the glory day for me, glory days, because I get to do so many different things and blessed to be able to do my, what I like to call domestic um, careers, part and parcel with the things that I love to do anyway. So, you know, pasta dinners are awesome and they raise funds and bingos are great and they raise funds but I get to play drums and raise funds. So it, it's super, super easy and, and a lot of fun to do. And, you know, so th that's just the best thing, you know, I'm blessed. <laughs> and you get to bring people too into that circle for the charitable arm, right? So it's like you guys get to do your talents like, like you do with the drum marathon. And then you get to kind of maybe take some of those musicians oh. and folks that you know and say, listen, this is a really cool thing because we're going to see, you know, you maybe see a different, I don't want to say clientele, but a different audience, right? You might be mm -hmm. people who may not know who you are, get exposed to you in the charitable realm. And then yeah. they say, you know what? I'm going to go catch him at a show. I'm going to go pick up his new CD. I'm going to go well, do this. I'm going to do that, right? 100%. And and the marathon, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, um, has, has opened the door for me to work with... Um, Jody Rafool or Rick Labonte, both in studio and live and to help them with an album or, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's grown. Um, so Liz Robinson and, and Stephanie Baker, like they were always friends and I've always uh, enjoyed their company and their performances and, and their talents. And when we needed some backup singers, they were always like right there. And I said, these girls are got to be in the band. And, and it was nice because, Kelly was always on her own. <laughs> she loves the girls now too. So it's, it's a little more 50, 50 in the rock band. And, and all of that came about from a previous project and it's, it's great. And that drum marathon has opened the doors to other events that I've partaken in and helped other people with their charitable endeavors. So it's, everything is community driven. Everything is cyclical. I think, um, you know, I, I just love seeing everyone succeed and I love seeing the younger generation succeed, uh, especially, you know, when they've been a part of the marathon and stuff and watching kids grow into young men and young women that are releasing amazing music. And you were one of the talents judges at a talent show back in the day and they were 12 years old. And, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing to see that circle grow and be, be as good as it is. So with a few minutes left here on the show, Jeff, I wanted to ask yeah. you, and, and thanks again, dude, for spending some time with me while you're yeah. out with the fam on the West Coast. Like, I think it's pretty epic, man, that you decided to, to do this with me. So thank yeah. you. Um, what's, what's next? Like, what do you, what does Jeff want? Like, what does Jeff want over the next like couple of years for Jeff? And then what is like, like, what do you want? Obviously I know you want to, you want to get back on the road somewhat to go yeah. tour once this COVID thing is yeah. done. What else, what else do you want? So we have intentions of writing an, another album. So we've done two EPs. We're going to write an album next one. We can start getting together, which is always great. Um, I would like to see um, many of the projects that I'm working with um, like harmony. I would really love to see that get off the ground and start a capital campaign for a full-time live-in quarters for many of its residents. And that's, awesome. we're going to, we're going to use this, um, this event coming up, ongoing event coming up uh, that we'll announce soon as a platform to kick that off. So we're hoping to generate good, good sponsors. Um, we're hoping to generate good um, rapport with, with people who are willing to help and who have the funds to help, um, whether it's an organization or, or persons themselves. So I look forward to that. Um, you know, I, gosh, arms, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really blessed. So I just hope everything gets better and gets normal yeah. and or new normal or whatever you want to call it. I just want everyone to be safe and and to, you know, just be good overall and have, have a good time. And <laughs> life's too short. You know, if anything is, is teaching us anything is life is really short to get hung up on, you know, a small family matter or a, 
a, a friend tiff or, or something. It's just not worth it anymore. Like wake up. It's, it's all good out there. You know? I love that, man. I love that because yeah. it's like, you almost want to cut out, <clears throat> I'm going to say it, like cut out the fat. It's like, yeah. you know, yeah. like how much, like how much can you, I say to my wife all the time, like, I God bless my wife. I love her. I say to her, I'm like, care. I like have, like I have capacity every day. And it's yeah. like, I, I want to be there for my boy. I want to be there for her. I want to be mm -hmm. rocking at my gig. And then I want to make sure that I can, like you, um, I want to make sure I have those 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 people and those friends that I can count on, and I can really like, you know, when when hell comes, you you know that you've got you know it doesn't have to be a lot of people, but it just no. be three or four folks that you can say, you you can just not be you with, right? And mm -hmm. I think I think COVID has really highlighted the the importance of having that circle and having those people in your life. Yeah, you're 100 percent right, and you know. It, it's easy to do it, it, it. I know it's a struggle and everyone has mental health struggles. So don't forget there are, there are, uh, you know, societies out there, the CMHA, um, they're out there and there are phone numbers and it's easily accessible. I'm, I'm posting it on my socials all the time as well. So, you know, um, hang in there. That's about all I can really say, yeah. you know, want everyone to be happy and safe and feel good. You know, that's right. Okay, brother, man, I'm going to, I've taken up of, of your evening. Um, again, God bless you. I, I think you're just a solid dude. We're lucky in Windsor to have you and the family doing what you guys do and, and the charities that you're involved in at Layuna. Uh, I mean, you, you're just a solid dude. So I'm, I, it's a pleasure to know you like third degree through folks through the years, but to actually get to know you closer. Yeah. It's been yeah, a real but, pleasure. So thank you. Yeah, man. I really appreciate the opportunity. I love, I love this project. I, I, I really dig it. I think you're going to do very well. So thank well, you. And uh, thanks for everyone for, uh, for watching and the questions and the kudos. Oh my, my God. And I, I thank you for making the time again. I, I, uh, I, I always tell people I, I miss doing the chats and now I get to just do it and hopefully make yeah. some time for folks and, you know, yeah. put it out there for folks to consume it. So anyways, God bless you. Safe travels back to the Windsor area and hit me back when you get up here. Okay. Will do buddy. Thank you so much. Arms. Thanks brother. Jeff Burroughs from the tea party, solid individual, probably one of the nicest guys you'll meet here in the Windsor Essex area. Um, the comments are still rolling in for Jeff. As we talked about at the beginning of the show, Unfortunately, they had to cancel their upcoming tour, which totally is not um, good, to say the least. As Jeff was saying, you could you could you could feel the um, the disappointment, right? Because they've been looking forward to touring over the last little bit. Um, so we definitely want to keep folks posted on what the Tea Party is doing. Uh, you can follow Jeff on social media. He's very active on Facebook, Twitter. Um, you can follow along and then, uh, we'll provide you with some updates throughout the next little bit about what's going on with them. So I know they want to get back to touring, but hopefully that'll happen when things are safer to do so. Anyways, folks, that's going to do it for this edition of the project. Again, thanks to Jeff Burroughs for spending some time with me tonight. Uh, don't forget, we're back again for a couple of episodes next week. Do this once, maybe twice a week over the next little bit. And, uh, don't forget, we're also doing this. Speaking of awesome charities, we continually to work with folks here in the Windsor Essex area. There's Steve Bureau, a photographer here locally, along with some of the folks who watch the live stream on a weekly basis with some of the new swag that we have. These are the Arms Boom and Lag Project ceramic mugs. They are totally collectible, highly durable, dishwasher safe, microwave safe, and they go to a great cause. We are selling these for $20 a piece, and we're asking you to change the channel and upgrade your conversation with positive vibes. Uh, our friends over at Divinal Designs, Debbie and her team, are making these for us, and you can order those through Debbie and her team on Facebook. Search Divinal Designs. These mugs are $20, with proceeds going to benefit the Windsor-Essex County Humane Society and the Ronald McDonald House at Windsor Regional Hospital. So uh, you can grab a mug, and you can contact Debbie, and she will hook you up with those Tell her arm sent you and know that you're helping two great local organizations here in the Windsor Essex area for this year with those mugs that are available now at Divinal Designs. Anyways, have a great rest of the uh, weekend. Stay safe and be good to each other. And we'll see you back next week with more on the Arms Moon Lake Project. Mm -hmm.